really Heather's one of my tremendous stars. She does a lot of great work in uh, analysis for us. So can you give her a round of applause? <laughs> They didn't have anything on their site. Uh, 
and then the same convention for the, uh, for the chat. So initially, you'll get a uh, generic password assigned, but subsequent to that, you can um, uh, assign a, a unique password so that nobody else except for those that just have permission uh, can access. If you forget your password, lose your password, whatever, no sweat, just call headquarters and we, we can reset it for you and then you'll want to see any input a unique password. Okay. So, uh, this is what the login screen is going to look like. Uh, so, again, if you're logging in to Webmaster for Ohio 7, uh, you've got the, the username in there, and then you type in whatever your password is, and it will be very Okay. Um, so one thing is like, and this is the, the kind of the exciting part about the uh, about the portal. Um, they're populated with information, including contact the information, listing of the officers, um, <clears throat> all that good stuff that's static. Remember that stuff is drawn directly from the officer report. You cannot change that. So we populate the system based on what we receive in your chapter or department officer report. Okay, so meeting times, all that good stuff. So if you change uh, your uh, meeting location, time, we have meet officers, and you know, someone resigns or gets ill and you have to elect a new officer, whatever, uh, just shoot us a new officer report and we will update the system accordingly. Uh, but the exciting part, you know, adding announcements, and if you're at the department level, you can add an announcement for your entire department that will push down to your chapter sites. Um, you know, you can add events, upload pictures, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, I don't think we do nearly enough of that, taking pictures of our uh, events we do, the service projects we do, and posting them on these sites. When people search the web for these sites, go to them if they're populated with that kind of stuff, they'll know we're out there taking care of business. We don't give ourselves nearly enough credit for the great work that we do on a day to day basis out there. And this is a great tool to, to do that with. Um, and that helps again with new member recruitment, uh, member reactivation, potential donors, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there are many different uh, resources out there for the portals. Uh, there is a webmaster user name. Pretty straightforward. It's not too, uh, uh, too intimidating. Uh, there's a fact frequently asked questions section. Uh, there's assistance for logging truck tuning, uh, customizing your views, learning how to upload documents, whatever it is. Uh, there's a resource there to help you. I want to emphasize this. You cannot break this system. I promise you. If you do, there's people out there like, hold my beer. You can't break it, I promise you. If you change something and you can't figure out how to change it back, you want to upload whatever, you can just call my team and they can get you squared away, no sweat. Okay? So I promise you, play around with it, try to break it. Alright, get in there, use it. You won't break it, you can reset it. Questions on that? Yes, sir. Uh, keywords. Say again? Keywords, keyword searching. Can you uh, identify your own keywords in this or are they extracted from the hospital that might as well have you? Well, so when I was mentioning searching, like going through DOE.org yeah. and, and whatnot, so I don't know that we can, yeah, because it's a shared point. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, the technology is a little bit older. Uh, you know, we're hopeful that in the next couple of years, as we uh, into our new uh, universal system that we call CRM. Uh, that stands for Customer, Customer Relations Management Tool. Uh, that's going to be an all encompassing system that replaces the membership legacy system and um, all the other major systems that we use in national headquarters. Uh, <clears throat> there will hopefully also be a component in phase two or three that's rolled out that will upgrade website experience for our uh, users to more of a monster.com type of exercise, things of that nature. Yes, sir. Yes, um, is this connected with Facebook or is it different 
No, it's separate, but you can create a link to your Facebook page from, from the, the, the site. So if you wanted to use the site to share some basic information and you were more comfortable having photos and activities and things like that posted to your Facebook page, you can definitely create a link from the, the portal to your Facebook page and make it prominent so that people know where to go. Okay? Yes, sir. No, no, for the, you mean the template, like what the background looks like and stuff? No, you should be able to change that, right? Okay. They can't, they have to contact us. Okay, so she's correct. We do have to change that. So at the beginning when you select it, that's the only chance you get to, to do no. it. Okay. Well, if they want to change it, they can contact me. Right. Yeah. So, everybody's signed up, right? Um, any other questions on the portal? Yes, sir. Why would you choose this um, method versus Facebook tool? So Facebook wasn't a thing when we rolled this up. So this, you know, again, this is a SharePoint-based system. That, that doesn't mean anything to you guys. It's just, it was the technology that we had to try to get something out to the chapters that they could use to publicize their own. Yes, sir. Also, the portal. Control by the webmaster. Right. Whereas Facebook is in your Facebook and Facebook and enter something in there, so as far as, you know, it, it, it allows another control from the chat. That's a great point. That was actually one of the, the advantages of the portal is that it kind of uh, allowed us to control the content. So, yes, sir. You can also increase the font. To, to a degree. Yes, I mean, you can make it pretty big. It's kind of like Word. But if I increase the font, then I can reduce what I can do. Yes. So the question was, can I increase the font in the site? Yes, you can, to a degree, because if you increase it too much, you're not able to get as much text in there. So then again, there are limitations. And as an, he had said link to something, that's actually a good idea. I can show you how to say click here for this information, and they would just click here, and it would open up whatever you wanted to open up, a document. I'm sorry. Can, can we have HTML tags? Some of the web parts uh, you can use. Uh, you can type in HTML. All right, so I'm going to move on to the membership system. Our time is one of the only two that has had a chance to get lunch. It's a district meeting to come very soon. So the first thing that I want to mention, obviously, we had a number of years ago a very big branding push, right, uh, to get to our current branding. Um, you notice that the older branding is still on the membership system, much to my chagrin, unfortunately. Because of some of the technical limitations that we have with the system, if we were needed to try to change the graphics, it might break the system. We don't want to break the system. We just got to limp to the finish line here and get to the new system, and then we'll be okay. So I appreciate your, uh, your understanding of that. Uh, but this is what, to the average member, the, uh, the login, looks, login screen looks like for the membership system. Uh, so who has access to what, essentially? Um, obviously, members have access to their own records, 
Uh, if you are a department officer, uh, either the commander at this new vice commander or an officer authorized to receive mail, you can leave that person as one of those on the free. Uh, you have access to your own records, plus the records of all the individuals within your domain. Uh, so if you're at the department level, uh, the department records, uh, <coughs> including the chapters, and then you have the chapter all of uh, the chapter members, the chapter members. So um, if you're a department or chapter officer um, that's not one of those four individuals, then you just have basic access to your own record. Okay? Um, that's been kind of a pain point for me since I took the range as national membership director. It's been a pain point for the organization for a while. Uh, wanting to give more robust access to different individuals. Uh, maybe you want your junior vice commander to be your membership person, right? Uh, <clears throat> well, because the permissions are again hardwired to derive from the officer reports, who's ever listed in those positions uh, by default in this access, I can't, I don't have a way to manipulate it. It's hard to uh, <clears throat> So, uh, however, staff that should somebody else that's listed as an officer on the officer report call and inquire for something for their uh, for their organization. So if you're a chapter junior vice commander and you're doing your membership drive and you want to current uh, member prospect list, if you're listed on the officer report, they will crank it out in Excel format and you know it's sort of any way you want. Okay, so this takes a call and we'll be just work with it. Um, of course, there's other levels of access for the employees, but these are the access for our membership members. Yes, sir. So, so we need to our department and stuff like that. Is there a, is there a way to add email to this board or just a call? So, if, if you have your So the reports that you're pulling are standardized, right? The, the PDF reports, right? So if, if you want, you can call. If you're listed on the answer report, call and ask them for an Excel spreadsheet for all of your members who have emails, and they can generate them. Yeah, and they, they did that, but I'm saying because the system so old that I can integrate that problem. Right. It'll be in the next system. Yes, sir. So there is a way to annotate the cease in the system, and the best way is just to give us a call and let us know that the person is deceased. The trick there, though, is that they will, will mark them as deceased, but they won't come off the membership rolls until the next year in the process of the 3rd of July. Okay. Yes, sir.
Uh, so <clears throat> the the uh, mission statement for the utilizing membership system is that it's a useful tool that allows members to view and manage their membership. In addition, department chapter officers can utilize the system to maintain their membership jurisdiction and obtain the useful information for the department or chapter. Uh, so as a member, you can update your contact information, request a new card for yourself, uh, request a transfer, or make a payment. As an officer, again, those four officers are the line. Uh, update information for members within your department or chapter, run reports for your department chapter, and view the department chapter officer report. So again, you must be a department officer to perform the above tasks for your department. So, there's a number of different reports, but we're going to really focus on the four most commonly used. Uh, so, when you go to the site, you log in with your credentials, and then on the left side of the screen, you'll see um, <clears throat> requests uh, for information. It'll be, you'll be hover over that, and it'll be a little slide out, uh, click on reports, and uh, again, there's a number of different reports. The four most commonly used Activity report, membership list, population, summary, summary, and recruitment. Important note make sure your pop up locker is turned off and these reports will generate. So, the membership activity report displays activity of members such as address changes, transfers, payments, uh, and you have to select a date uh, for that to follow. So, if you want to know what's been going on in the past year with your members, you can select. July 1 to the current date, and we'll give you all the information today. So, again, uh, choose membership activity report, and there's a date parameter, and then generate the report. Just click once, and you click multiple times, and we'll try to open up multiple reports for you. Okay? Um, give it a second, it typically doesn't take too long. Uh, again, same difference with the membership list, uh, with respect to requesting it. This displays a list of all your members, along with your member's current address, phone number, balance due, and membership status in a specified department or chapter. You'll also be able to generate mailing rules uh, within your department or chapter. Okay. The population summary. Uh, so if you want to know how many members you still need to recruit in a given membership here, this is where you find it out. Um, Select a list of all the current membership counts for a specified department and all its chapters. So if you're going to pop on for your chapter, obviously it'll be specific to your chapter. Uh, so again, click on um, the pop on uh, awesome and you know, type over your uh, membership list. Uh, down the bottom, you say population. So we'll fix that before we send it out. Um, so choose population on the generator. And obviously, your department membership folks can see the goals for all of the chapters. Yes, sir? So can a person that doesn't have a disability but has a claim in its process, do they become a member? So, uh, it's a little off track, but I will answer the question because it's so important. Um, if you go to EDB's YouTube page and look up the value of the membership video, it's just a minute and a half or so. Uh, it explains this in great detail. You do not have to be service connected by the VA in order to be a member. Right? So you have to have a service related injury or disease. You have to have at least one VA service during the periods of conflict that we outline in section 11 of our bylaws. And you have to have an other than dishonorable discharge. Those are the three things you have to have to be eligible for membership. I don't care if the VA decide your search method or not. That is not our criteria. Um, so I also don't want our members, our member recruiters, and care for the member process for military records, service treatment records, 214s, whatever. Who in here has encountered somebody they know was full of when they said they were in the military they were? I'll go to the second brigade, fourth seals, or the first one <laughs> <Right. laughs> Probably, right? We, we, we know. Uh, we, can, we can tell when somebody's. I mean, I was a Marine, and I, I'm not overly familiar with Army Rangers and stuff, but I know enough of you, and I'm 
friends with enough of you to understand somebody saying they're a soldier and they weren't, I can pretty much sniff it out. Somebody saying they were a sailor and they weren't, I can pretty much sniff it out, right? If you have a question or concern that somebody is truly eligible for membership in an organization, take their application, take that money, send it to me with a note saying, you know, this guy's not passing the sniff test, you might want to take a look at it. And then I would meet at Harvard and get after it. The final authority of whether or not somebody's eligible for a membership in the DMV is Mark Burgess, the national action. Period. He's the one that makes the decision. So we may, you know, at that point, solicit them for service, you know, some evidence that they were hurt in the military or what their service is or whatever the question is surrounding, right? But let us see that. There are privacy act concerns, uh, PII concerns, all sorts of things that I don't want you to delve into. Uh, and if somebody challenges somebody for a membership, about their membership, and they in fact are legit and are wanting to be part of our brotherhood and sisterhood, now we just kind of sit around with them, right? Right from the end, how encouraged are they to be to want to So I don't want you to carry anything for anything. If they say I'm eligible, here's my dates, the dates look good, shoot it into me, okay? Yeah, your question. Yes. Doug, All right, so. There's going to be a typo on the next one, too. Oh. Copy and paste. I'm seeing the assistance of all those actions. There's another typo. Copy and paste. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We'll forgive you. Um, so the recruiter report displays the list of recruiters in any given department chapter for a specified membership year. So, Folks that have signed people up, this is where you can uh, look uh, to see you know, what your end of year membership awards are going to look like, that sort of stuff. Okay. Uh, you know, we've got a pretty aggressive goal this year 36,000 new members or so. What are our new goal that we have? Remember, part life members count toward goal. Conversion is part life and full life no longer count toward goal. So we want new paid members. If they're paid out and gained forward in full life, perfect. They count. But you sign somebody up for $20 recurring payments, they count too. Okay? So recruit those part life members. That is no longer anathema to our recruiting members. Okay? Under the old goal, if your part life member got to be big, it made your goal big. We don't want to have that happen. So. Yes, sir. Trauma. Trauma. How, how does someone become a trial member? So trial members uh, occur when someone goes through our transition service program and they complete an application process. It's just a very limited, uh, you know, main email. We don't even get a physical address on them because they're transitioning out of the military. They probably don't even know what they're living right? So we diary that for 30 days subsequent to the discharge that they give us. And then we send them out a solicitation offering them to become a trial member via email. Um, so our trial members are not as, um, you know, we don't get as many of them now as we used to because they have to engage in that effort. Um, we're also rolling out a new program. You all may hear about this, so if somebody said, hey, I got a text from somebody saying they were from DAV and they wanted me to join, it's legit. We are texting people using the uh, information that they're giving us through the TSO program, some other member prospects that we might have developed up through other individuals and probably some the additional uh, presence that we have on Facebook now, other social media. If you search DAV, you know how you can get it. You're online and you're searching for Wool socks for the winter, and all you see is wool sock ads. Well, I'm that guy, I'm the wool sock ad guy, yeah, except it's DAV. If you search for the DAV, you'll always see the banner ads, and it's called a mark. Um, it's a very good thing to remind people what they were looking for and why it's important. So, um, <clears throat> but, uh, uh, so yeah, we've got some other tools, but uh, you'll hear more about uh, texting and effort and stuff, I'm sure. National Yep. How do we get access to that? 
to you want to access with respect to to right. So um, you want to bring those numbers back into the chapters. So uh, we got to be careful about that. Um, of course, we don't want people to stay in the National Endowment chapter. Uh, some people are there because of disciplinary reasons. Uh, so they're still a member of the organization, but we don't want them to have a voice or vote anymore because of something they did wrong. But uh, uh, certainly, it is. Yeah, it is. And, and I want to get as many of them reactivated as possible. I've got metrics to show that. Um, so you'll hear me, if you call me and talk to me about a chapter that's failing, uh, you know, it's not attracting membership. I will have a very robust conversation with you about what's doing Kansas City chapter, getting in associated with membership or information seminars, it, you know, advertising its presence in the community, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I would, there's no question about it. We would much rather merge chapters than shutter chapters. If we merge them, it's automatic. I can use my national membership director magic wand and just move all the members from one chapter to the next, right? Um, but if they if they shudder, then all the members go to the national at large chapter or to uh, have our chapter and I issue them new cards and I've got metrics that show it's very likely to end up back in the chapter. But what does that mean if you've got full life members, no one's gonna pay distribution on them, right? So that's, that's a great point. Call me at that we get back to home and we'll talk about right. this morning. Yep. Webinars dealing with AFR and officer reports. And, um, 
you know, our, our new gold dynamic, uh, all the other things that we're trying to drag ourselves into the 21st century, uh, and sometimes taking the stream, but we're, we're getting it done. Um, there's voluntary services webinars on there, there's officer resources. So again, you can't bring it, poke around. Uh, there's probably tools there that you never knew existed. So, um, questions? Uh, membership. Uh, a person who is over 80 is entitled to a membership for free. Does that count as a membership number? Uh, so, yeah, right now it is. So, you sign somebody up for over 80. Okay. Um, yes, sir. On, if you sign that person up who's over 80 on that cell phone app, the computer doesn't get credit for it. Is that an accident or is that on purpose? So, if, if you're you over 80 and I sign you up, you never ask for my name and membership number as a sponsor as soon as you get signed up, but I don't get credit for it. Right, so you only get credit for paid numbers. No. Yes, sir. I have two questions for you. On the hot list. I charge you for the first one. <laughs> <laughs> on the hot list, you said if you want a zip code list, call in. Are they going to accept the phone calls or are they going to date and submit to you your new form for requesting the uh, hot list? So, no, I mean, we want to direct you to the form, but if you have the experience with one of my members, especially says, no, you got to send me the form, I want to know about it because that's not the protocol. But, you know, uh, I want you to use the form. I want you to be comfortable using the form. It's very simple. It's a drop down. Uh, you email it in. You put a couple of zip codes on there if you want. You shoot it in, and it's automatic because you don't even have to bother down on the phone. Um, that's why we created the form. So I'd like you to use it. I encourage you to use it. But um, yeah, if, you, if you're not comfortable with it for some reason, just make a phone call and give them your email address and what you're looking for. And they'll help you massage the request to get you what you need. Okay. Um, I have had problems with calling that's because I have you want to know black. I'm on your list. Too. <laughs> uh, you made a statement if you're a on the officer's report but not one of the top four, they can call in your check and they'll send them the list. Let's take the chapter mm -hmm. or a chapter. Sure. He can call in and get the list. If he's on the officer report, but there's not a site for chapter anymore, right? But you can add a addendum to the report. Um, but I would rather be somebody that's on the actual report so my staff doesn't have to review the items. So, somebody that's actually listed on the report. Well, no, he wants one all the time, so that's why I'm wondering. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, I guess. Uh, no, it's just a person that is, the guy who said that the sponsor information isn't is on the app. They added that to that sign up somewhere last week in one of our events. So it is on the first page that they will have at the bottom. For the over 80s? No. Yeah, so when you, when the first thing you do is type in a uh, birthday, yeah. and if the system recognizes that you're over 80, it switches to a different, less uh, less uh, complicated form. So, yes, sir. I'm going to read that. It's back to the ADM. And every time it does, it gets put in the memory. I didn't hear saying, it. Saying uh, Puerto Rico credit cards are having a hard time being processed. I know we encountered that a little bit before, but this is what I want you to do. Get with Heather at some point before the convention. Give her the information that she can take it back to our, our vendor that does that for us and see if we can work through that. We've had some issues uh, that we've been able to discuss with her. So uh, let's give it a shot. Yes, sir. Um, you said that you have to have a sign Right. So we assign them to the chapter that is closest to them. If they're right in the middle and as the crow flies, there's two separate chapters, sometimes it's flip of a coin. Um, so if they don't select a chapter themselves, they are getting assigned to a chapter. Uh, that's why it's important for you 
chapter of the park folks to make sure that, that happens. You know the lay of the land of your area is a lot better than I do. If they don't put a sponsor number on there, we'll just be credit for that. Yeah. 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 What I would recommend highly, if you have people that are enthused about the crew, I love that. Have them go spend a couple of bucks at Home Depot and give them a stamp with their membership number on there. We can just stamp their applications or have their membership card ready if they're using the online application. I'm hopeful that all of you will come to the membership seminar. Sunday at 115, I have got an incredibly exciting new program that is uh, probably going to be the death panel for our, you know, leader uh, online membership application on uh, that we've been using for the past couple of years. This is going to be a way to recruit and a lot of people to via social media. Uh, so please, please, please come for the details at the membership seminar. Uh, I'll take one or two more questions. We're stressing the importance of adding members to our household. You mentioned earlier that we have a deceased member to contact one of your people and give them the name. Typically, I'm the manager of the company, and typically, I only have five or six per month that give to be my chaplain. Is there somewhere you can email them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just email you know, the membership public at Davey.org. Okay. Yep. Yeah. What information are they looking for? Uh, as much information as you can provide. So name, name, address, uh, chapter number, yeah, membership number. Do they have the information of uh, yeah. Now, what is it? Uh, it's just month and year, right? We don't put anything yet, but it will change with the CRM. So, uh, yes, it was as much as close to the data as you can give us. Just to, just to elaborate on that a little bit, we contract with a private vendor uh, that helps us with the CC. So they have this huge network of, of uh, resources, you know, obituaries, and all that other stuff. Again, I mentioned earlier the concerns about uh, privacy information, security, making sure the membership system is as uh, safe and secure as possible. And what we used to get social security money from. We don't do that anymore. We've got rid of that. Um, so that's the easiest way to determine whether somebody died and the Social Security Administration wants to study down there. We don't request that list anymore, so um, even that would become even slightly unreliable. With this new system, the only kind of pearl that we have is sometimes if you have like a senior and a junior in the same house and the senior dies, they might try to kill off the juniors or member. That sort of thing. So something that they they said, okay, the membership system, just give us a call, we'll fix it. It's not a problem. Yes, sir. If you're not notified by the chapter of the department on the seat, do you guys have a way to figure that out? Yeah, so it's the same. We have the third part of that gives us got notifications on um, the basis. So if we get a new membership list from you, that should be fairly accurate then? Yes, uh, where it's more accurate than it's been in a long, long time. I can't say it's 100% accurate. I mean, so. I don't like talking about this sort of stuff because you know, I'm a big integrity guy, but we've discovered there are folks that will call and tell us, well, oh, Jim's not dead, just because they want to keep getting the magazine. <laughs> so there, there are battles that I have to fight that are just silly, you know. So, uh, you know, we have to then do our own internal research going into both the visual and the programs. Uh, but so you know, so there's all sorts of things. Yes, sir. Last question. Submitting also report online used to be copied and not moved in at all. Does it now? So yeah, you, uh, just send in the hard copy and get into the new CRM. You'll have a way to do that online. I, okay, I, I, I guess I'm not hearing you. You can update your office and report online, correct? No. You can't do that anymore. No, yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's not something I dig into every day, so I haven't checked with the new yet. All right, so uh, folks, again, I hope to see you at the membership seminar on Sunday. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you.